Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to this series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 17, and today we're talking about the three special filters in pigments called Comb, Phaser, and Formant. So let's load up our new preset as we generally always do, and I like to be on analog, plus this is a saw wave, which is going to make much more sense filtering this rather than filtering a sine wave. Anyway, so let's go over to our filter and select comb here. And let's start off instead of LP6, let's go back to feedback for the uh, for the first initial viewing of this. So this graph is extremely helpful to see what's happening here. So we have a couple knobs here on the left. The first one here is going to be frequency. So you can kind of move this left and right. And you, as you can see, this graph corresponds with this knob to kind of locate where within the spectrum you want this effect to take place which a comb filter is basically your input signal with a delay signal mixed in creating this type of effect. Now we have the gain here and it's pretty hot on the uh, initial default version. So you may want to drag that down a little bit more to kind of have a traditional type of comb filtering sound. Then we have our traditional keyboard tracking, which you should be familiar with by now. So let's take a listen to this and see what this sounds like. Turn this up just a bit here. So a very cool sound you can already make just with moving the frequency knob and the gain is actually pretty cool at that spot here. If we add some voices in here, we can make some really cool metallic -y type of sounds with this. And as before, we have the volume of the filter and the pan here. And this is going to be selected on feedback. Now, we also have feed forward, which flips these peaks here and makes it have a different type of sound. So it would be something like this. So almost a more traditional type of comb filtering with a little type of phaser sound, even though they're different, but yeah. So a very cool sound you can do with that as well. Now we're gonna get into the LP6, the band pass, and the high pass. Now notice when I select this here, we have two additional knobs here that we get to play with. So let's turn this gain down just a little bit here and kind of demonstrate this here. Now we have that same type of effect, but this dampening is kind of interesting because as we hit a note down, check, take a listen to what happens when this is all the way up. Now as we bring this down, So it's dampening the high frequencies, almost like a very, very, very gentle cutoff. As you can see here, it leaves a lot of this here. It's not really cutting them off, but it is dampening to bring down the volume of those high frequencies. And that's where you would set this here with this knob. And this is selecting the all pass filter here. So this filter is very cool, and these new ones here were uh, were added with Pigments 3.5, so if you don't have some of these, you may want to update to 3.5 if you haven't already. Now we have the band pass, which is going to be, you might hit a key and you're like, well, I don't hear anything, and that's why you have to move this dampening downwards. There's a lot of cool effects you can get with playing with, with the uh, comb filters in this synth. It's very, very cool. And at the end, we have the high pass, which is basically the opposite of the low pass. So this knob here is going to work almost in a backwards function. So at the top, we're not going to really hear anything, but if it, at the bottom, it's going to be full. And keep in mind, we can also send this filter to the second one and add additional filtering. So there's a lot of possibilities you can do here. So for the next one is pretty cool is going to be the phaser here. Now, this one's a little bit more simplistic. We have our traditional cutoff. We have the feedback here. But one thing that we should look at here. So if we bring this cutoff here in the middle, we're, we see the thing called poles. And it's kind of going to be on the left and the right hand side. So every time we add three poles or four poles, we're going to have one, two, three, and four, which is going to give us two notches. So we go to six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, giving us three notches, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 12. <laughs> Now you might wonder when we move this feedback, we don't really see anything reflected within this graph here in pigments. But if we look over here to our spectrum view, we can actually see what's happening here. 
So this brings us all the way to the top. We're pretty close to it, and let's make some moves here. <laughs> So these lines here are very well defined and that's due to this feedback. If you brought this all the way down and do kind of a similar thing, they're not going to be as, des or as defined as they were before. So kind of it's, it's kind of simulating what a resonance type of effect would be doing here, but for all these different notches here, or these poles creating the notches. So moving on from there, this last one is one of my favorites because this formant sounds very good in this synth. Other synths have a type of formant filter, but I think this one is done very well. So if you're unfamiliar, the formant kind of mimics the vowel sounds of a human voice. So with that being said, we have a few different knobs here. So we have first the frequency shift, where we want this to happen in the frequency spectrum. Then we have the morph. So kind of look at these little peaks here. As we move this morph here, they kind of morph, as it says here, between different resonant sound or different uh, formant sounds. Then we have the Q factor. As we move this here, it kind of emphasizes those peaks a little bit more. And then this blend kind of blends between this filter and then the original signal. So let's kind of take a listen and see what that sounds like. So let's put everything back to default here by double clicking. And this is what it would sound like out of the box. So kind of like an ah sound, right? And as we move that frequency, it kind of gets a little higher pitch because we're moving the, the peaks here that makes it sound like a higher frequency. And what's nice is to kind of dial in a sound that sounds pretty human-like. And then if we morph these. And then the blend here, the more we increase this, we can see our original saw waves are kind of coming in more and more. So if we kind of want to bring some of that out, we, we can turn this always to the left. So generally, these are my favorite kind of things if I want to make kind of a droning vocal type of sound here. So what we do is we have some stereo or some voices here, and they're going to be stereo, so left and right, and we have all of these at eight. So what's interesting is if we go into our envelopes here and we increase this attack here, and we're going to talk more about envelopes a little bit later on, and a nice healthy release here, send it to some reverb. And the key here for this type of effect is maybe making a very slow LFO and modulating the certain sweet spots for your patch with a frequency shift and the morph. And you can really get a nice sounding droning vocal type of sound that sounds pretty realistic. And having that in the background of something soaked in reverb can have a really cool effect on the sound. So that's basically these special filters in a nutshell. Definitely recommend spending some time with them. The format is very, very cool. One of the best ones I've found. So yeah, that's how that works. In the next video, we're going to be talking about this amp mod section because that's also very important to, uh, to understand what these knobs here do. So with that being said, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.